Welcome to Kenny Quest First Ride, where I test ride motorcycles I've never ridden before in the hopes that I find the perfect motorcycle for me. This time, I am riding a 2023 Fat Boy. All reactions are authentic and based on my past experience. I'm a newer rider. I ride a 2021 Harley-Davidson Iron 883 Sportster with a Stage 1 upgrade and a vintage 1996 Harley-Davidson Heritage Softail Special that I fixed up and made road ready. Links to those playlists in the description below. Let's ride. So you know it's a fat boy when you see this iconic star emblem. Fat boy was designed by Willie G and a couple other guys from his design team back in the mid 80s and they brought it to Bike Week in Daytona. I believe it was 1988 for the first time and then in 1990 it was a model made famous by Arnold Schwarzenegger in Terminator 2. So my first time on a fat boy. Welcome Kenny Quest. All systems are online. Enjoy your demo ride. Yeah. Oh, it's really short. Yeah, it sits lower to the ground than the Heritage. I'm six foot tall, very generous bend in my knee. Of course, the Fat Boy 114 comes with floorboards, as you can see there. No windshield, but you can easily add it on with a bracket kit and the windshield, each sold separately. Kickstand. It's a little bit different than the Heritage. It's got this little sweep up right here, which is pretty cool. Got a little bit of a rumble there. Yeah, it's got a little bit, little bit nice exhaust uh, sound, even though it's a stock. So you might have done something a little bit extra there. With it being so low to the ground, your slow parking lot maneuvers at rallies really a breeze. Set up with these beach bars, low slung. So as you can see, I got this little bend in my elbow, but. Mirrors not catching my shoulders that much, hardly at all, so that's good. Fat Boy's equipped with cruise control, otherwise your standard accoutrements and controls. Left blinker, right blinker, hazards, kill engine, engine start, high beams, flash to pass, and then this cycles through your menu options, which uh, you get trip A, trip B, your range on your fuel, how much you got left, your clock, and RPMs. Oh, nice. Very smooth. Let's get it. Rev limiter. So second gear goes to 70. Ha <laughs> Yeah, man. Third gear, 80. No problem, no vibes. Just a slight tingle in my butt. And third gear at 72 miles per hour. Shift it in the fourth. And a little bit smoother as the RPMs drop. So I'm getting a little bit of wind in my uh, belly, but that's okay. It's Florida, it's hot, and this is welcome. But if it was winter, I'd want to have that windshield. You can ride all year round in Florida, and it can get kind of brisk in the morning, and then by midday it's 80 something degrees. And right now we're about 90. But I got an interesting comment here I'm going to make after this turn about the seating position and how I'm feeling. Ooh. Yeah, so that big back tire there, <laughs> I didn't want to turn it too sharp, but um, I had to turn it a little bit more sharp than I'm used to because of the bigger fat tire. But I feel firmly planted. So what I was talking about, how I feel, is I feel like I'm on one of those police bikes or one of those hydroglides and electric glides from the 1950s, the way I'm sitting upright, and the way my thighs are hugging the tank the fat boy tank ironically enough um, is fat and wide and it's wide enough where I can kind of grip it with my inner thighs I have not noticed a Harley Davidson motorcycle that I've been able to do that with that's typically something that you do uh, in a sport bike or 
something along that line. And so that's going to give me a lot of extra confidence when turning because I can kind of use my weight. And we're going to attempt to do that up here at this next turn. But uh, we can't turn on red, they said, so we have to wait. So I'll go ahead and speed this up. If you catch me speeding along in a video, it's because I'm just moving past the parts where nothing's happening. But because of these beach bars, you really feel in command of what's going on. So I'm going to hug the tank and lean my body in. Yeah, and that's how you turn on the fat boy. None of this upright in the chair, man. You got to put a little boogie into it. Now this bike costs just as much as the Heritage. Now the seat's not as cushiony. It does have a little bit of lumbar support and it weighs about 30, 40 pounds less. And I swear I can feel that lack of weight without the bags and what other Ellis is making that Heritage a little bit heavier. But uh, you can add bags to this as well. They make bags that fit with the quick detach system and the windshield just add another thousand dollars for all that stuff but this is definitely a cruising if you look up cruiser this is the quintessential cruiser from harley davidson it's one of the most iconic bikes everybody says that if you watch this video it's the most iconic bike arnold schwarzenegger terminator 2 but it is but does anybody buy them now when i was cruising up here today this morning i did pass a guy uh, probably early 30s on a fat boy just running it naked just like it is here if I got one I'd probably throw a swing arm bag on it just like I have on my iron 83 and that's enough to handle it the uh, short backrest that you have I have one of those for my heritage and I flip between the luggage carrying one and that backrest and it's enough space to tie down a backpack so you don't have to wear the backpack but if you want that visceral in your face Harley Davidson experience this is nice and I like this better than the fat Bob because with the fat Bob as I mentioned in that video you look out and you can't see there's nothing past your clamp top clamp here it's just like it's it's a box it just drops off but at least with the fat boy you have this nacelle right here I just went over that pothole it wasn't a big one but it handled it like butter like it was nothing excellent suspension oh that's fantastic i'm very impressed i expected this lugged bike that wasn't nimble look at this oh yeah this is freaking awesome controls the clutch i like it it's closer to the grip than other models for some reason and it's not adjustable but it just feels closer yeah, and slow speed stuff, it just comes to a standstill. I didn't have to put my feet down just like to the last minute. That's fantastic. But it's got a nice little note. And the dial, I can just glance down, even with a full face helmet, because the way it's elevated and slightly tilted, not much of a tilt, but it's got probably a five to 10 degree tilt. I can see it fine. Oh, it just wants to go. Yeah. No problem. Nice click into second. All your shifts. Confirm clanks. Gotta embrace that clank. That's one thing I love about Harley Davidson. Over metric models and, and other brands that try to build cruisers. I say try, they build cruisers, but you know, their versions of them. And it's that confirm click. Give it. Yeah, that's nice. All right. Still in third. Third gear is a long gear. I'd be in fifth gear in my heritage and vibrating all over the place with my Evo right now. <laughs> This is fantastic. Click it in the fourth. Yeah, it's like fifth and sixth are overdrive gears. So you can definitely crunch the miles on this. Just throw that windshield on, get some bags, and you're done. If you want to ride 
with the fat boy in the fat boy style, which is as American as Harley Davidson as you can possibly get. And really, the fat boy's gone unchanged the last couple of days. The, the Lakester wheels are new. They have slots in them now instead of being solid discs. But other than that, downshift, really smooth. Rear brake, a little soft. But nice. Good brakes, though. Yeah, this is way more maneuverable, I feel, than the Heritage. Way more maneuverable. I feel a lot more confident here in these slow speed drills on this fat boy. Friction zone's good. Yeah, let's see if we can get this in neutral. I couldn't get the heritage in neutral. Oh, this one too. Oh, there it is. Yay! All right, 2023 fat boy. My closing thoughts right after this. As you probably could tell from the first ride, I did enjoy the Fat Boy 114. However, it's not perfect, and there are some dislikes that I have about it. One dislike, though, carries through pretty much the whole Harley Davidson line, and it's the fact that Harley Davidson is still providing halogen bulb indicators. Folks, you've heard it once, you've heard it twice, I'm sure you've heard it a thousand times. Harley Davidson put LED indicators on all your motorcycles. It doesn't cost that much. Another dislike to me, it's the perceived value to price ratio. I believe that the Fat Boy is $1,000 to $2,000 overpriced to what it should be in comparison to the other models in the soft tail line. And I know I'm singing to the choir out there, so if you're price conscious, you might want to look at a pre-owned 2021 or 2022 and save two to $3,000 plus the extra freight charges and add-on fees that occur with a new bike purchase. If you want to save $5,000, then look at a 2008. 18 to 2020 model. However, some of those models are equipped with the 107 engine, not the 114. What I like about the Fat Boy is that it's tuned from stock and performs better than any other soft tail model in the current lineup. And I've ridden them all. Its acceleration and gearing are better than the Heritage, the Fat Bob, the Street Bob, the Lowrider S, all the soft tails. I really enjoyed the planted feeling that I got when I was on the bike, aided by the fat tires. It was very comfortable ride. The most comfortable ride that I've experienced on the soft tails is on this fat boy. The style, chrome, chrome, chrome. If you like chrome, the fat boy has you covered. And I believe the colorways that they offer this year are a good choice of unique colorways. This two-tone gray haze, silver fortune, example that I rode today is a perfect example of that. This fat boy sounds better stock than any other Harley bike in the lineup without a stage one. And again, I've ridden them all. I don't know what they're doing with their pipes and the way it's tuned, but it rides great and it sounds great out of the box. Suspension. It's good. It steamrolls over the bumps without any incident. Who do I recommend the fat boy to? Well, I recommend it to any Harley Davidson enthusiast that wants a badass bike. The suspension's good. The performance is there. Maybe change out the ape hangers from the beach bar. Put on your sissy bar slash luggage rack for your trips. Take it off when you're not using it. And now it can become a weekend tour. It's an iconic bar hopping bike for the weekend warrior. Who perhaps maybe already has a touring bike in the garage. The fat boy is perfect for someone that doesn't like the look and stance of the heritage. Or the lowrider ST. Perhaps someone that looks at those bikes and go, that's not badass enough. I need myself the fat boy. That's who I think the fat boy is for. And I think Harley Davidson continues this model in the line for the purest Harley Davidson enthusiast who likes that iconic look and stance with a little bit of modern touch with the Nasil and a nod to those fat rear tire chopper days of 20 years ago when ironically the fat boy did not have a fat tire. Where will the fat boy rank overall in my best of Harley Davidson list for this year? I don't know yet. I still have a few more first ride videos to share with you, including the Breakout, the Street Glide, Heritage, and more. So subscribe and hit that bell to be notified on my next one. Then when I've dropped them all, I'm going to do a recap video and you'll find out which Harley model I'm picking as the best one of 2023. Thanks for watching this one. And if you want to see my Rogue Glide ST Fast Johnny Edition first ride, click the box right here. It'll take you right to it. I'll see you on the next one.
So there's the iconic shark nose with the fastback blue paintway. Do you know Johnny the Piglet's last name? So Ray Weishar was the wrecking crew member in 1920 in Marion, Indiana. Mm -hmm. 